Hello guys, just Goron here and welcome back to building the Bakes of Berge. It's been a while since there's been an episode. We did have two live streams. <laughs> the first live stream was the 300 subscribers special live stream in which we toured the park and I showed off a whole lot of stuff. The second live stream was a bit more of an improvised one. I visited the zoo yesterday as of recording. And I felt like going through the pictures I made and making some adjustments here and there. Now since I don't want to force you to watch those streams, let's quickly go over the main things that have happened in between the last episode and this one, uh, progress-wise. Because I have been doing touch-ups of various areas like this fence for example. You can see there's a lot more color variation in it. This is something I've been doing all across the park in, in various of the wooden buildings, like over here. This fence has also been given some color variations. This building has been. Uh, this building as well. The bar over here, again, just slight color variations to make it look just, just a little more interesting. Now, while we're in the Africa village, we can also have a peek back here where this backstage area has been given a bit more detail. Also over here some foliage has been added in between the Africa village and the elephant habitat. And just speaking of foliage, tons of foliage has been added all over the place. Pretty much the first safari field has been given a bunch of foliage around that was still missing, making this area very bland. And yeah, over here we've got birch kind of growing around the sides of these viewing uh, like elevated walkways. The springbok field has been given a bit of a makeover. The natural paths have been kind of hidden away. Uh, I've made a gate over here which is still not completely finished but it's getting somewhere actually. Just gotta rotate that a little. I've added plants on this side of the elevated walkway just like there are in real life. Uh, fun thing about this is I'm guessing because the sun usually shines on this side of the kind of hill, uh, this side's very overgrown, while this side is pretty, uh, pretty bland still. Here I should probably add that yes, I have actually oriented the zoo in such a way that the directions of north, south, east and west kind of correspond to what they are in real life. Over here the back of the rhino stall is pretty much almost done. Uh, we've got these kind of section of areas. So yeah, when we get to this, we'll finish off the Springbok habitat, uh, putting in the last kind of missing things over here. So amidst all the foliage work done, uh, if we go through here, this kind of area has been reworked a little bit as well, just adding more detail. But over here, we've got kind of a very foresty area, uh, which is really not an accessible area at all. It's just an area you drive past. So not too much attention has been given to it, but then we enter the f safari field. This thing, it needs to be a bit more dense uh, tree-wise, uh, but still pretty open. And the ground's very barren, I assume, because the animals eat most of the plants here. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly birch, some other trees. Um, with my visit to the zoo yesterday, I've been able to determine that oak is actually a very common tree type in the zoo. Uh, so I've been trying to put down some oaks here and there, but this over here, this humongous thing, is actually the smallest oak tree that there is in the game. So you can imagine uh, we're not going to be able to fit oak trees everywhere. <laughs> over here we take the walkway down and we go into what is supposed to be and now finally is actually becoming a foresty looking area. So looking down here We've really got a Scots Pine Forest. I think I want to get some more variation here because it looks a bit too much Scots Pine right now. And then on this side, this is starting to be almost finished. Uh, we've got this kind of path now hidden away pretty well. And you've got a small viewing area into the safari field, which is a terrible viewing area, but people do use it actually, so <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, this uh, this bit of forest needs more detailing, but I'm I'm working on that. It's not really interesting like episode material. It's just stuff I gotta do in between. Cause these are really just kind of filler areas that I have to get done. 
Here's a pretty cool thing though, this little tube that kids play with. I mean, I played with this when I was a kid, so it's been here for so long. I really wonder what their idea with it was. So what do we want to be doing today? There's actually a number of options. I can either work on the chimpanzee habitat. Now I finally have pictures of it. Uh, I can work on this little area, kind of finishing off that. Uh, I What I really want to do is work on this area, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea, because if I ever kind of get a bit of backstage access, maybe, I've I've gone come and con I've, I've contacted the zoo um, to see if they maybe want to cooperate by letting me into some places. <coughs> I don't really expect a response, but you never know. Um, but yeah, if I if that becomes allowed, then I can ha take some much better pictures of, of these kind of areas than the ones I have now. So that's why. As painful as it is to leave kind of this open spot open, I think we are going to have to do that. Then lastly, there is the area I just pointed to, which is the pelican habitat and um, the remainder of the springbok area. And then finally, finally, <laughs> last thing that just popped in my head is over here, there's a white-faced gibbon habitat that also needs to be made. And all of them are pretty much equally important because they're all just bits of open space that would really tie together some uh, aspects of the zoo. So I don't know which one I'm going to pick. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to point out uh, that I finished in between the last episode and the first stream is the rhino field is now finally pretty much done uh, with the trees in the background and the kind of this forest area in the background there. Um, yeah, this is now finished. So we've got a little habitat over here. I decided, you know, it's probably best to just start at the front of the zoo. Probably the part we want to get done first. So yeah, let's see if we can get to this and that today. And then the front will be pretty much done. So we've got this habitat, but there's one problem. But there's one problem. And that is that in order to put down a habitat gate, you have to be at least four meters away from like the water source, right? Which currently is definitely not the case because I made this nice and small. But I wanted my habitat gate to kind of be inside of this wall because it's perfect. Keepers go through here and yeah, and also on the island and also have a little shelter here. It would have been great, but yeah, can't do that. So the habitat gate's over here. I'm gonna see if I can hide it a bit more, but I think it's an amazing spot because what we should be able to see, I really hope, um, is that we are going to get our capuchin monkeys and move them over here. So I'm pretty sure I tested it with a p-file. I'm pretty sure this should be fine and you'll see why. So another one. Are you kidding me? Are you all just going to be doing that now? <sighs> Ruining the moment. Like, oh, they come. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Bring it on. What? Where did you come from? Okay, the game, <laughs> the game is, um, is bugging me today, to say the least. But we've got our monkeys. So, oh god, they can climb this, can't they? Okay, that, that's fine. They don't have any escape points, at least. So, we've got our monkeys. Now, the only problem, I think, is gonna be... I'm pretty sure if we're gonna put anything on here, that then the keepers are gonna complain. Like, oh, I can't reach that. Uh, let's make sure it's actually Capuchin Monkey. Oh, no, there we go. They can't reach it. Okay. So, there's not going to be a feeder. I'm curious <laughs> as to what the keeper is going to do with this habitat. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, the white-faced gibbon, or, well, in our case, capuchin monkey, has been put into place, and it has given us the weird effect that now people are lining up <laughs> on the road, uh, where what is essentially supposed to be a road where cars are driving towards the car safari, uh, to view these little creatures. And of course, this little path still has to be continued onwards. I think that has to... Pretty sure that has to go all the way and then connect with this one, with a little zebra crossing there. And it's cool that we now have kind of a setup for this bridge and shelter piece, which is, I'm pretty sure, the same all around. Because these are used in many spots, like over here. And of course I'll have to check if that is indeed the one. But they're used over there, then over here again, and I know that over here they have a different kind of uh, print on the front of it. But yeah, it's a similar building, so that's uh, that's gonna be neat uh, if we can reuse that. Okay, I didn't see this food get placed down, <laughs> but apparently the keeper is able to get to the island. I am confused. Like, I'm not going to put down any feeders, because, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the island the way it is now. It's very simple, but good. Um, but, yeah, M mystery of food. Also, mystery of gorillas. They they continue to be clipping through here. Um, I've tried pulling this a bit more from the wall, in the hope that that helps. I hope it does. Haven't seen them done it since, uh, so let's yeah let's hope that that solved it. Also, also I did the path. It was pretty finicky with the water being so close to it, but it's uh, it's good now. All right, welcome back to the entrance, and I didn't really feel like recording any in between parts, so I just ended up finishing it pretty much. So we have the climbing frame in the front. I went with the painted beams instead of the actual climbing frames because, I don't know, the thin climbing frames are just too thin while the thick ones are too thick. So I ended up with these. Uh, the only downside of that is that it's now kind of a big difference between this one and the one at the second primate house. But I mean, they're far away enough for you to not really notice, I guess. So it's fine. And, oh, they're actually using it. That is a surprise. Look at them go. Oh, and using the rope. Wow, they're going all over the place. That's really cool. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, they're, they're like actively using it as well. See, and at that point, I'm really confused about when or how they, they decide to use the climbing frames because because the main theory people have at the moment is that they like pick the shortest route, but I've seen them do stuff that like doesn't seem to make sense in that regard. So I don't know, uh, but I just built what there is in real life, and uh, that's uh, what we did. So now we have some monkeys climbing around. That, oh, that makes me really happy. But I'm not recording. Oh wait, I am. I looked at the wrong thing. <laughs> But yeah, on the other side of the habitat, uh, I think we need some more foliage here, actually. Uh, but I'll, I'll get on that. And we have some little shelter things uh, with some kind of really old curved planks on top of it. Uh, and then a few more climbing frames around. Also some ropes hanging from these trees. This tree is protected by some electric wire, I don't know why. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, these climbing structures are made out of uh, branches more than uh, than beams. And over here, I've made this one a bit higher than that one, uh, and this one actually counts as shelter because of that they're actually able to fit under. So, so I'm not sure if we are be able uh, if we'll be able to see them do that. Uh, well, probably not because they're about to get food. But let's see, are they gonna hide from the rain? Probably they they mostly do that by just going inside anyway. They've got a few dry spots here as well now. Oh, 
they're using the climbing structure. See, like, is that the shortest route for them? Like, did I block the actual shortest route? Because it... You think that they just walk like this, but no, they, they climb all over the thing before they go there. I mean, I'm not complaining, like, this is great. <laughs> and this guy just doesn't seem to care about the pain at all. So yeah, that is the chimpanzee habitat. So it needs a bit more detailing of foliage, but overall it's pretty much done now. And with that, the entrance area is pretty much done. Like aside from again, some more foliage work around here and there, but we are really at a point where, um, where yeah, this is starting to become done. So there's still plenty of time left in the episode. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on these areas next and kind of get some more things done in here. And, and in doing so, um, if in the next episode we'll get this area done, then pretty much the entire front of the zoo, except for this middle area, which I'm kind of reserving for, hopefully in the future I'll be able to get some more kind of backstage pictures there. But aside from that, um, kind of this entire front area of the zoo is going to be finished. And I think, and I think at that point, I'm probably going to be putting the park on the workshop already, uh, kind of as the first phase done, because at, at that point we will be kind of like, I don't know, 40 to 50% done with it. So that, that's really exciting. Um, and yeah, then you guys will be able to kind of experience it for yourself, which is really great as well. Okay, let's do a quick clip before I head to bed. And what we have over here is the stables, pretty much complete, as well as the area between the stable and the elephant habitat. So if we come down here, we've got a bunch of foliage pretty much blocking off your view into this, uh, this part of the elephant habitat, which is pretty much just for the caretakers and zookeepers. Then we've got this kind of section of area and we've got this kind of interesting looking wall let me pull up the reference photo for you. So yeah, over here you can see that same wall with the yellow stripe and then these kind of painted out pieces where there's actually animals inside, but we don't really have that kind of detail possible, I don't think. But yeah, over here we do have that similar wall with similar spots missing and the, uh, the pattern. And the back of it, I also have some reference photos of actually. Uh, but yeah, we've got these doors into the stables and some kind of storage sheds. So let me pull up a reference photo of this. So yeah, you can see the green doors all around. I think that's supposed to be more than we have, but I don't have enough space for them really. And yeah, we've got the little shed with all the hay. So yeah, we kept it pretty simple, but it's uh, it's nice for for a back for a backstage area. It's pretty nicely detailed, I think. Yeah, then over here, there's kind of this overgrown area leading you through. So next up is kind of this habitat bit, as well as this viewing area over here. I don't know if we'll be getting to the aviary today. I think that might take a little bit too much time considering all of the ropes and stuff like that. So the next episode is probably going to contain the aviary as well as the Red River Hog. All right, so not much has changed. I've added a bit more fence. This little uh, kind of hill over here has been expanded and I've put down some pathing over here. Don't worry, this is actually covered by a staff path over there, so guests cannot get into here. But yeah, it's a, it's only a small small leap in progress. Uh, got some of the foliage in over here, and I also put a door in here because I uh, I forgot to do that before. So this is now also pretty much finished. 
But I did notice that the episode was getting pretty long, so I decided to um, to cut it short here. Next episode, we'll be working on the backstage area over here and possibly also this aviary. It might take a while for the episode to come out. I do have to admit that I'm finishing up this semester of university stuff, so I'm, I'm really, really busy. Uh, also, tomorrow or, or today, I don't know when exactly this video is going up. The 20th of May uh, is my birthday. Uh, so this first day I'm going to be celebrating with small <laughs> bits of my family um, but my girlfriend's going to come over and I haven't seen her in over three months so I'm really excited for that um, so yeah that's going to take away a lot of my time and then also having to do stuff for school I'm, I'm trying to kind of give myself the relaxation of playing Planet Zoo in the evening and working on school during the day but um yeah, as the deadline draws closer and closer, I will probably have to make some sacrifices here and there. But yeah, you'll just see the episode come out whenever it does. So, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and goodbye!